we are definitely repping a team. We're supporting a team. We're sponsoring a team. And uh, that is the California Unicorns. And Ooh. Kosti and I will be managing them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's going to be super fun to cheer the Unicorns on. I'm looking forward to uh, to sweating the team. I'll be watching their first match this Friday um, against the uh, Croatian Bulldogs, which will be uh, very, very interesting. Yeah, and so Kosti and my uh, shared role this year is sort of managing the team, figuring out lineups and promoting the team. I guess now we could tell them who's on the team, right, Kostya? Let's do it. Let's introduce the team. So uh, anybody who's followed the Unicorns, which was previously the Mechanics, um, this is a team that uh, was in the U.S. Chess League for years, then moved to the Pro Chess League when the U.S. Chess League became the Pro Chess League, um, and then changed names from the Mechanics to the Unicorns. But... Uh, you know, the first player here on the roster, Sam Shankland, he has been with this team since he was a low-rated board four on the mechanics. And the U.S. Chess League was weaker than the Pro Chess League, right? It was more like average rating 2,400 USCF-ish, something like that. And back mm -hmm. then, we could stack our team by having Sam Shankland on board four at you know 2100 or something and that would let us play a bunch of players from 2400 up to 2550 or so <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah he got his start there uh as a lot of bay area players have you know i had a dream one or two years ago Kostya. Yeah, i had a dream to put together a team that would be only board fours from the mechanics mm. and so you could call the team like the board fours which sounds like you'd be weak except now they're all really good <laughs> but our board fours included shankland robson sevian and neiman so one season i was like yeah let's make a lineup that's just the california board fours you know <laughs> It's a strong team that, that could take on many Olympic teams right yeah. now. So we never quite got that whole lineup together, but Sam Shanklin has been with the team year after year after year after year. Yeah. Natural leader, mm -hmm. great board one. Yeah. In addition to being a good chess player, one you know personal detail on him is that he's a very, very loyal person. I believe, you know, and I hope, <laughs> that if another team offered him $5 more, then uh, the unicorns, you know, Sam's just going to keep playing for for his team. There are like six U.S. teams uh, in the league now. Uh, so so gradually we've had to hire uh, free agents from other parts of the world. Um, but this year we've got a player who I've wanted on the team for many, many years, but it's his debut season, and that's Ray Robson. Probably everybody knows him. He hit 2,700 this past year for the first time. He's playing the best he has in his whole life by quite a bit. Fantastic run at the U.S. Championships where he revealed the new the Robson version 2.0 or something. Um, super, mm -hmm. super strong. And also a lovely guy. So my criteria for the team is to have people that you want to hang out with on the team. Whether or not you're going to hang out with them, that's still the criteria. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, right. Yeah, also just super good at online chess. He's... Um, I just looked this up. He's a three-time straight world puzzle battle champion, mm -hmm. which is uh, very, very impressive because yeah. he has to defeat the likes of Christopher Yu and Tani, right. <laughs> like these puzzle monsters. Um, and he's not the youngest kid in the world. Yeah, he's uh, 28. So yeah, but he's he, untouchable he in that format. Like his super. worst, like his worst run in general is like as good as the best run of anybody else over the course of the event. Yeah, no, I mean he's uh, he's insane. Yeah. He's absolutely insane. We've got two more really big sort of free agent or off-season pickups, if you will. Huge pickups. Um, two players that haven't played for us before here uh, as well. Uh, so we've got uh, Gukesh from India. How would you sum him up in one sentence, Kostya? Gukesh is a future top player. I was so shocked. <laughs> He's when a current top you... player. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not yet. He's not there yet. I mean, like top, top 10 player. He's okay. amazing. Um, Pumpkin the Cat's asking, how did you manage to get Gukesh? I had that same question. You know, we met a little while ago. We we said we needed a couple more players. You were like, I'm going to email Gukesh. And I was like, yeah, sure, great. Email Gukesh, sure, yeah. whatever. Well, we <laughs> divided it up, it up, right? I was like, Kostya, you talk to Faruja, and I'll yeah, talk I'll to Gukesh. Yeah, I'll email And uh, yeah, and then I emailed yeah. uh, Faruja, and <laughs> you emailed Gukesh, and Gukesh actually got back to you and said, said yes. Yeah. So I won that round of the manager competition. 
Yeah, that was a big because you didn't that was bring you didn't bring Ferugia into us. Maybe you talked him into modeling instead. I don't know if you totally missed the memo. Well, they say you know always start with a compliment, and I was like, oh yeah, I saw some of your work, and I thought it was great, you know, and uh, yeah. yeah, and and now it seems like he's he's totally gone. But um, I mean, okay, if they're yeah, I was honestly surprised that he wasn't playing for the the French team. I thought that would be such a natural pick. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, we talked to we talked to um, Gukesh's father. Gukesh is playing like a lot of a lot of games. Um, he was just playing Wake on Zay. He's playing another tournament that's, um, that starts today, the WR Masters. Hmm. Um, so as fans of every member of our team, we're, I'm going to try and. Uh, look at some games from the WR Masters on stream in the next ten days, um, but uh, but yeah, pleasant discussions with his father. He was happy to join us, um, and uh, if I had to sum him up in a, a sentence, Kosti, I would say he's a genius. He's definitely a genius. Yeah, the rumors abound oh. that he basically didn't work with computers up to right. you know up to being a GM at. 13 or whatever yeah didn't touch computers until like yeah gm at i think 14 or so um amazing fun fact about gukesh he was the top seed um in the world under 12 championship a couple of years ago the world cadet um and the number i think number two or three seed in that tournament um was another one of his teammates christopher you um, next up, we've got Ilya Nizhnik. Yeah, Nizhnik, he's also a child prodigy. He's the youngest player I've ever lost to. Well, I mean, maybe I lost to somebody younger when I was a kid, right? But I mean, as a as a master. Yeah, I think he was either 11 or 12 when he beat me. Let's, let's say 12 is more plausible. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and he was like just about 2,400, just like me. He's done well in the league before. He and Robson are teammates. So once we got Robson, I was encouraged to go for Ilya because I thought, you know, we could we could build on that on that bond. So that's that's stacked. Um, I'd like to see Ilya make twenty seven hundred fide in twenty twenty three. That's my that's my goal for him. I mean, pro chess league is fun. I you know I hope and expect that he'll have a good score and that he'll have fun on our team. But um, yeah, I'd love to see him break twenty seven hundred. I think that's the last big like career career milestone um to go for there yeah definitely um and uh yeah you can catch him sometimes on the st louis chess clubs channel which is live right now you can catch him sometimes on chess weeb um along with dennis boros um then we've got Darrow. He's played for our team before. He's a great guy. He's fun. He came out here and played the Western States. Well, I don't actually, I never know what the different names are of these tournaments. Golden State, Western States, whatever. He played the January 14th through 16th tournament, Costia. What's that called? Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a Golden State Open. Golden I remember State. he was here also for, um, I think it was a Ruins tournament. It was like a Berkeley International, but the most mm -hmm. recent one. Yeah. Um, maybe 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I got to meet him in person, which was really fun and like helps, you know, to hang out together, helps for bonding the team. Super happy to have him. Would love to have him play just season after season after season for us. And now we're down to our sixth board and we're talking a former league MVP. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Georg Meyer was the top scoring player in the entire Pro Chess League one season. Yeah, he is really really good at this yeah Jorg Meyer uh he's been playing online chess for many years he's an absolute legend uh super super strong and yeah I'm not sure if he's gonna be like board two or board three for us but uh he's yeah. gonna I mean he's, he would be board one most years for most teams so so he's a great player he's gonna play board three for us this Friday and then we've got a local player Chris Yu Woo! Woo! he's one of our you know just super improving kind of players where you can get a junior who's got a certain rating and they bring more than that to the team, right? And we've talked about what are the ways that you can get an advantage in a league with a rating cap and approximate parity. Um, and Chris Yu is one of those ways. Yeah, because the league is based on FIDE classical ratings and a lot of these juniors have very underrated ratings, especially 
they're number one underrated and also the format's completely different it's online speed chess where they're much stronger compared to their classical rating um so they're a lot closer to uh maybe someone who's high rated than them in in classical which makes a huge difference yeah so if you see the kind of players who show up in like chess.com's junior speed chess championships or players who you see reaching the top 10 in some rapid chess championship matches or things like that those are going to be really good pickups of course we didn't have to research chris Yu. we knew him because he's from here so super happy to have him here and then we've got uh two more new players these are both uh players that that we found and recruited you know i didn't know too much about them before we were like researching and looking for who is the best uh player in the country rated 2200 or lower <laughs> and Kostya, right. you came up with sabina which was an amazing find i would not have thought of her because she's been 2300 and somehow yeah. her rating was 2195 or whatever in this one supplement yeah we were very lucky to get sabina because she matches very well with our average ratings because you got to be under um 2550 and uh, you don't want to be too low on the bottom board because um any female player under 2200 counts as 2200 um so yeah i just i don't know i just checked the top <laughs> top list and see so i was available i saw her name and yeah she's a friend um so we reached out luckily she wasn't on a team yet and yeah i feel like she's a great pickup because she's um super strong she uh you know won the u.s uh, women's championship a few years ago um i think yeah she was working with with uh Jakob Agard at the time um, of course, she's uh, married to our friend uh, Elshon. Yeah, just uh, I think very underrated at twenty one ninety five uh, feet and like also very experienced. So I feel like she's definitely going to score some points for us. I think in general, the most important round is almost always going to be round four. That's when like some people will be tired, some people will like f lose their nerve, stuff like that. Um, yeah. And uh, that's when you know her level of experience and the number of important games she's played is going to be huge right there. And then our last player is uh junior Zoe Tang. Zoe's also, also just 14 years old. So she'll be skipping out on, on class for, a, for a couple hours here and there to uh, play against yeah. the best players in the world. <laughs> yeah. It's pro chess league. It's like, Hey, teach. I have to go play against Hikaru Nakamura. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the teacher will have heard of Hikaru at this point. Yeah, so it's got to be, yeah, got to be excused absence. Kosi, I don't know about you, but if I wear a chess shirt or jacket or whatever, which I have a fair number of, I cannot go out without somebody talking to me. Yeah, that's changed in the last couple of years. I had that experience too in the in the Bay Area. I was like wearing a chess thing and then someone walked up to me and asked like um, if I knew of like any local chess clubs in the area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, every, yeah, it's wild. Every time now, a hundred percent. It's not always ten people, but it's at least one every time I go out. <laughs> that's crazy. You should um you should keep doing it. You tell them about Chess Dojo? Yeah, but that's what I was gonna tell you. I was thinking like a very simple little marketing thing we could do, Kosi, would be to print little paper cards that have mm -hmm. like, you know, our name and the URL and we just hand them. I mean, this is sort of an aside from from the unicorns thing. This was going to be back end. I was going to talk to you and Jesse and Hokey about it. Mm -hmm. but it's like one thing to tell somebody chess dojo, but if you just hand them a little card. Yeah, I think you just invented uh, business cards. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or here, I'll do you one better. Mm -hmm. What if you just wore something that represented our channel on your body and uh. it was just had a name that they could just Google and then <laughs> take I I... I... <laughs> I don't want to buy our merch. <laughs> well, you don't have to buy it. We'll send you the merch. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me to put like a QR code on my sweatshirt and just tell people to scan to scan me as I walk by. <laughs> no, 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 just this simple logo. This is uh, Chess Dojo. And then they'll, <laughs> they'll remember. <laughs> they'll remember <sighs> where, to, uh, where to go. So, um, so Zoe, I... Uh, we haven't seen her play the um the u.s women's championships yet so i think she'll be an unknown name to a lot of people to nobody yeah. in in oregon obviously but to some people you know at the national level she'll be unknown 
And I predict that by this time next year, that will not be the case. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it'll be fun. It'll be fun to, you know, give her this opportunity to uh, play against some good players. Um, I assume that, you know, as a player growing up in Oregon, she has to travel to get experience against good players or find suitable online events. So it'd be cool to get her some experience and then see how she grows over the next couple of years. Yeah, she's super young, um, still improving. She's in um, US chess school, I think almost every week taking those classes. So I know her a little bit from there. Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited to have her on the team. I think a lot of times the uh, the juniors, they can really they can really make it, so. Our first lineup is um, Robson on board one, Schwierch on board two, Meyer on board three, and Fuizor on board four. Um, very cool, very cool. We're playing the Croatian team, the Croatian Bulldogs. Do you have uh, do you have their list as well? I can pull it up. Yeah, there's Dayak, um, for their board one. So that's okay, he's gonna good. be yeah. Not that's gonna, gonna be an exciting and challenging matchup for all of us. Yeah. Um, and then uh, board two for them is Leon Levajic. Okay, also good. Yeah. Board three, and this could be dangerous. This could be dangerous. They're on um, board three. Wait. I mean, I'd never seen the name before, but it was a good find. Bardia Daneshvar. Okay. 16-year-old Iranian national champion. Yeah, it's, yeah, basically Feruja, next Feruja in the making, pretty much. So that's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's uh yeah he's um yeah he's uh <laughs> he's scary, Potentially he's scary. A... <laughs> it was 2400 a year ago then he won the iranian championship and got up to 2500 so now he's a new grandmaster or i guess he still has the im title but i mean he's clearly a grandmaster oh great so he's basically like kramnik uh pre-92 Manila Olympia <laughs> destroyed her. <laughs> Hopefully not quite. Hopefully he still like needs a couple learning experiences and uh, here we go. Know, our players will be able to provide that for him. Mm -hmm. And then their board four is Polina Shuvalova, who um, dusted me in the I'm not a GM event last, yeah, she... last year. She almost won that thing, right? She's just uh, she's like twenty seven hundred online. Yeah, yeah, she's she's good. Their team's really good. Their team's really good. They do have a very strong team. Yeah. Um, but I was I was calculating it, and I think that our team statistically should score about eight point three points. So mm. hopefully. We can, we can we can round it up to 8.5. Yeah, so you're saying there's a chance. Stop.